Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. To the citizens of Pennsylvania and to my fellow colleagues here in the House of Representatives, let me start off with this significant point. More than 100,000 family sustaining private sector jobs have been added to the Pennsylvania economy since Governor Corbett took office in January 2011. The state of Pennsylvania has without a doubt weathered a difficult national economy better because of the leadership and the initiatives of this legislature along with Governor Corbett. Over the past two years, there has been real leadership and real governance and a delivery to the citizens of Pennsylvania, fiscal discipline, enhanced private sector job creation, real integrity in government, and educational improvements for our children. It is actually an exciting record of accomplishment. There has been real change positive change because it has required leadership and the people of Pennsylvania do not expect the status quo. In terms of fiscal discipline, we have held the line on taxes, provided real predictability and stability for those who make use of state expenditures by having budgets done on time, and we've prioritized where hard-earned tax dollars should be focused. As Governor Corbett said, over the past two years, we have spent more than any time in Pennsylvania's history hard-earned tax dollars on public education K through 12, ever. And in addition, the governor has made sure that those individuals with intellectual disabilities mental health concerns have been truly taken care of. Let's talk about this particular balance of respecting taxpayers and their hard-earned dollars and providing for the citizens of Pennsylvania. In this budget, the governor proposes spending on mental health services of $690 million. And for intellectual disabilities just at the state centers, $120 million. Intellectual disabilities with respect to um, autism intervention and services over $15 million. Intermediate care facilities, $150 million for intellectual disabilities. Community-based programs, $150 million more. Community waiver program, a $1 billion, all of it for those citizens with intellectual disabilities. And that's above and beyond the amount we spend on medical assistance. The fact of the matter is, in this 2013-14 proposed budget, the governor has asked taxpayers to put forward $11 billion, $11 billion, to make sure the neediest, in terms of our elderly and our disadvantaged, are in fact taken care of. With respect to education, The proposed expenditure on education in full is $11.3 billion. Basic education, which does not include money above and beyond from any privatization program, basic education, through our tax dollars, 10 
billion dollars. Higher education, 1.2 billion dollars. And the public library subsidy, over 50 million dollars. Those are significant expenditures that show real care and concern for the citizens of Pennsylvania. What I'd like to remind folks when I'm talking to them is, is that the taxpayers, through our fiscal stewardship work, our custodial responsibilities, are in fact funding these expenditures. And we must never forget that. And we must in fact thank them. We collect in tax revenue over $11 billion from the income of the citizens of Pennsylvania. We collect over $9 billion from sales transactions from the citizens of Pennsylvania every time they go to a store and make a purchase. We take over $2.5 billion from the corporate net income tax from the employers in Pennsylvania. We must understand, in being good fiscal stewards, that we have to balance what we are taking in taxes, the revenue side, with prioritized, responsible spending on the other side of the balance sheet. Real compassion, real concern, but respectful of the people that are, in fact, footing the bill. It's a tough job. But in the past two years, like small businesses, like families, we have lived within our means. We have increased spending, but we have kept it under the rate of inflation. That's appropriate. The past administration increased spending by almost 50%, while the rate of inflation was just over 20%. It was unsustainable. And a budget was never passed on time, so that there was never an element of predictability or stability or real governance or real decisions or real leadership. This budget absolutely is consistent with real leadership and real responsibility and a thoughtful approach to governance. And we are hoping, as was the last budget, that it will be a bipartisan effort. In terms of private sector job creation, no administration and no legislature has done more to make employers want to stay here, expand here, relocate here, or start up here. Lawsuit abuse reform, sprinkler mandate repe repeal, changing the building code for real housing starts, which is a driver in the economy. Not one, but two unemployment compensation reforms that allowed those who were in tough times to make sure they had a hand up, but at the same time, tightened eligibility, made sure we cap benefits to reduce our debt, and put in a real job search requirement. We allowed for infrastructure upgrades, which had been talked about for the better part of 10 years. Economists project that for every 10 million invested from the private sector in natural gas infrastructure alone, we'll add 100, hundreds of jobs created in the Commonwealth. And it will allow for 11,000 miles of older gas pipes to get replaced, according to the Public Utility Commission. Public-private partnerships, we've talked about those for years, in terms of transportation in particular. Those are now implemented and are being made used so that there is financing, not just from the state, but the risk is shared by the private sector. And with respect to employ employer taxes, we have changed how we compute the corporate debt income tax 
so that businesses located in Pennsylvania are no longer punished by taxing their assets or their payroll, the people they employ, but in fact encourage more businesses to stay here with this single sales factor. And yes, the governor's correct. That job crushing capital stock and franchise tax, we continue to phase it out. And at the end of this budget, we will make sure that it is gone so that we no longer are carrying two significant taxes on businesses. With respect to welfare reform and LIHEAP reform, we brought integrity back to the systems so that people who, in fact, need the assistance are getting it, but that fraud and abuse continues to be whittled away. The taxpayer dollars are, in fact, being spent where they should be spent. And you know the governor has been a champion of human service block grants to allow counties more opportunity and flexibility to deliver human services. And the pilot program in which 20 Pennsylvania counties wanted it are now well beyond that number, and the governor seeks to increase it. In terms of integrity in government, Penn Watch, every expenditure for every branch of government will be online. And we here in the House reduced per diem expenditures by almost $2 million over the prior session, and we're going to continue to reduce it further with common sense reforms to be more like the private sector, eliminating car leases, and contributing to health insurance plans like our constituents do. And in terms of education improvement, we talked about the increased dollars on public education, but in addition, we doubled the Educational Improvement Tax Credit, one of the most important school choice programs. And as a component part of that, we made sure that 50 million of that is geared to opportunity scholarships available to children living in within the state's lowest achieving public school districts. Just important legislation. Now we need to build on this. We need to move Pennsylvania further into the 21st century. And we have that opportunity with a structurally sound budget, a responsible budget. But in, in addition, providing, like every state around Pennsylvania, the ability to purchase wine and beer in grocery stores in a convenient manner. So that when you go shopping for your groceries, you can in fact pick up a bottle of wine. And I suggest that moving to letting the private sector, like almost every state in the nation, you will double the number of jobs and they will be family sustaining jobs because the private sector in the end is best at bringing product and service to market. We do need public pension reform, particularly going forward. The citizens want to make sure that government employees have retirement packages like they, like they do. We are not in any way being um, short-sighted. We know that to bring stability, we have to make changes going forward. And with respect to transportation investments, it is true that $6.8 billion is already being spent in Pennsylvania annually of federal and state dollars. But we need to make sure that we look at additional ways, including non-tax increase ways, to make sure that we continue to do our best by roads, bridges, and mass transit, particularly if real reforms are brought to mass transit that need to be brought to the table. Now, I want to say this about transit. The Democrats, who we work with on so many initiatives, certainly have an opportunity to be shaping public policy with us as team players. Naysayers, that approach does not govern, does not lead. True partners in being bold, in thinking out of the box, in moving Pennsylvania forward, we invite each and every one of our colleagues from the other side of the table to be part of that effort. Keep in mind, under the past administration, when our colleagues controlled the House for four years, there were no increases other than borrowing to help out any transportation. Now, we have an opportunity to make great strides, 
moving Pennsylvania to a private sector approach with real convenience for our citizens in terms of purchasing beer, wine, and spirits. We have an opportunity to think outside the box to improve transportation while maintaining our responsibility to the taxpayers. And we have a real opportunity to move forward and make Pennsylvania more like the private sector in terms of its public pensions without reneging on our promises to existing and uh, existing retirees and our employees. I ask each and every one of you to rise to that challenge. We had an exciting first two years of this governor's administration, and I think it will be a bold, challenging, exciting, and rewarding opportunity to make Pennsylvania citizens' lives better in this two years and with this budget. Thank you.